Hello buddy, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at Cubes. Cubes is an interesting operating system that is designed around the premise of running everything in its own virtual machine so that there is no risk to the other virtual machines. This is probably the most secure operating system in existence, and is designed that they claim to be both relatively user-friendly and powerful, so we're going to check it out. Now, of course, I am running this so that I can capture this. I am running this on a VM. Do not do this. Like, other than for the sake of testing, uh, this will both make the performance worse and it will nullify the security benefits, because VMs only provide security in one direction. VMs are very difficult to escape, but it is trivial from the host computer to enter a VM. So you need to put the dangerous stuff in the VM, not put the safe stuff in the VM. And it looks like it won't run on VMware, so we'll try KVM. Now this on the back end uses the Zen hypervisor rather than using KVM. Now, as a result, everything is a VM under Zen, just like it is on Hyper-V on Windows. And the way this basically works is every application, you have workspaces, and you can have different levels of trust. And now I've got it working. I also had to change the graphics from Vert.io to QXL. Now that's one of the biggest drawbacks with this, whether you're running it in a VM or on bare metal, it's basically impossible to get graphics acceleration on cubes. So you can't play games and... There is, there is some trouble even playing very high-resolution videos, but now we can try this out. Now, the installer and the GUI in general looks a lot like Fedora. And you also have to set a disk password, which you'll have to do every time you boot. That is so that if someone stole the computer that has cubes on it, they can't just take all your data that way. So that's the first line of defense. So we can now choose our templates. We also, uh, it virtualizes all of the USB and network controllers. I believe a big reason for this is that they can have, like, if there was a network called vulnerability, uh, that still means that rather than like that Wi-Fi vulnerability we talked about a few months ago, rather than just taking over the whole computer, it would still be stuck in the network cube, so it could mess with the network, but it couldn't couldn't actually take over the whole computer. So ultimately, to get this to work, I had to discover a couple of... Uh, very obscure command line options, uh, do some stuff with the XML. I'll, I will uh, on screen show uh, the settings we needed to actually make this work to get IOMU. Most confusingly, you have to pass the Intel IOMMU through, even though I'm using an AMD CPU, but that somehow works because it's emulated. And then there's an undocumented option in Libra, but ultimately we got it to work. So now we just got to wait for all of this to happen and then we'll be good to go. And here we go. We've now got cubes running. And we can look at all these different things. So by default, we get a personal, uh, which is a moderate level of trust. We get a work, which is a more trusted VM. And we get an untrusted VM. Now, to my understanding, that basically means we can safely do whatever we want and nothing bad is going to happen on the main system. We've also got this really cool thing. So... If you also, of course, probably want to protect your privacy in addition to security, the Wanix is ba is an advanced, it's like Tails, which I showed before, in that it really it lets you have a really anonymous Tor setup. And here it's just starting the different things. And here is Sysnet. Now, I think I mentioned this earlier, but this is basically when we have the network that's running in a VM, they pass through the network code to a VM and then run the network code in its own VM so that if it's exploited, it cannot be jumped to the main system. Now this is running relatively slow because this is a nested VM. It run a lot faster uh, for you at home. Uh, the only real performance drawback of using cubes is graphics acceleration is a no-go. Uh, no graphics acceleration. There's no there's no way around that. Some people have reported that they could uh, pass through a graphics card if you have a second one like I do. But if that's your interest, you're probably better off not using this. But here we go. We've now got this Tor browser. And it doesn't matter if this Tor browser gets exploited, it's not going to break out into the rest of our system. Now we can run uh, a personal Firefox as well. And now the personal Firefox is going... And while the Tor Firefox is running on Tor, we also have the Vault. And you can also open terminals in any of these environments. And the graphical user interface is all 
it is all integrated. So despite the fact that this is a VM and this is a VM, and they're both actually running an operating system under the hood, uh, you'd never know. Okay, it's Fedora-based. I just didn't know which one it was. So we'll install NeoFetch so we can see. Yeah, this is a Fedora 40 VM. And we have a global clipboard, but we can change the settings for that. And we can actually see the resource usage here. We can go up to Cube Manager, and we can see how the resource usage of this goes. Now, all of those IPs are local. They're not internet IPs. And we can see all these different ones we've got. And our system net, where the virtual network card is passed through. I'm just going to reboot this to get the network going. Now, when you first boot up, you have to enter your disk password. And then when that goes, you can enter your user password. That helps so that if your device was stolen, which would be a theoretical way of countering all the cybersecurity measures, uh, no dice for the thief. Uh, they're going to have to get through that as well. And then I just have to reboot again because by default, uh, QMU uses a virtual graphics tablet and the tablet uh, is blocked by some security setting in here. But now we're good to go. And now our internet is working. So we can use the internet. Uh, I've got the untrusted one. And you can, and see here we can go to templates and we can actually create, we can create new cubes and we can install stuff in any of our cubes. So uh, as an example, one of the most notable people who use cubes besides, I believe, Edward Snowden is Paolo Ardonio. I might be butchering his name. Paolo is the lead developer for the popular cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex. I'll show you uh, what Bitfinex is. And he mentioned uh, on his X account that he uses this. And I think he is a prime demographic. Uh, developers don't need graphics acceleration, but what they probably would like is very good security. As you can see, I'm on, in this case, the Bitfinex website. And then on here, we can install, we can install, I'm just going to install Vi Visual Studio Code as an example. If you prefer NVIM, you can install that as well. Uh, and then we can have that. We can do our development work. The other demographic this is really great for is journalists, whistleblowers, people who are targeted by sophisticated actors, and especially, okay, well, we'll just go with NVIM then because it's not in a repo. Uh, the other other people who, uh, the benefit of this is, while it's not the simplest thing to set up, it's also, like, this is easier than even, like, an Arch installation. You don't need to know a million things about computers. The other benefit of this, as opposed to, and I'm actually do, working on a sponsored project where I'm going to show off uh, a really great enterprise security solution. But the other thing this achieves is privacy, right? EDRs are fundamentally very, very invasive. The way that an EDR works, which is uh, an enterprise antivirus program, the way those work is they will have to send pretty much everything you're doing to their servers. That's how they work. You might be able to on-prem some of that, but there's a lot of data collection. This solution doesn't require much in the way of data collection. The simple way it's used is you just have these different cubes. Now, let's try the Tor browser again now that this should be working. Also installed NeoFetch. Now we've got Wanix going uh, with the home page, and we can we can still do stuff on here. Uh, you can't watch YouTube on Tor anymore, but we can get to the website, and we can see what that looks like. And of course, we get, because this must be an EU Tor exit node. Yeah, we're in the Netherlands. And we can still see the home page, and we can see my channel. They can't watch anything, but... Yeah, no, we got to confirm that we're not a not a bot, but we can still uh, we can still see what's available here, and we can watch something on the regular. We can go on over to the untrusted, and we can watch anything. Now, if you remember my video, can you get hacked by just clicking a link? Well, if you don't want to get hacked by clicking a link, this is an extreme solution, but it does work because even if let's say uh, YouTube turned out to be a malicious website, and when I go to watch. Uh, the OP of Serial Experiments Lane in 1080p 60 FPS, uh, or or, or a ad for Amazon that works too. Uh, it turns out to exploit. Well, it's just exploited the untrusted VM. Because I gotta have this on mute. Actually, I probably shouldn't show much of this because this is technically still in copyright. Uh, but yeah, it works. Let's see what resolution we can get up to on here. This is 360p. Now I am curious if this can play 1080p without trouble. Yeah, it looks like it can. So even without hardware acceleration, you can play 1080p video on this fine, and the performance be better for normal users. And we can do some other things. Uh, we can, of course, do any sort of Office work, and you can even install a Windows Cube if you want to use Microsoft Office. You can install GIMP, and you can do some photo editing, and 
that performance is totally tolerable. I mean, for all the bad things you say about GIMP, it, it is uh, very good on resources. And here we go. We've got GIMP. We can do image editing on this. We can do pretty much anything we want that doesn't require uh, acceleration. So for the reason of acceleration, obviously I'm not going to be switching to this on my main computer, but I think it's cool. I wanted to show it off. Now, one other reason that you might want to use something like this is if you're a developer, especially if you deal with something like Python, uh, let's just go to create a new cube, and you're tired of managing virtual environments, well, you could just create a whole cube for something. I mean, you can even choose uh, which environment is going to be easiest to work with. And now we've got a Python cube. Now we can go open the terminal on the Python cube and actually set it up with Python. And there we go. We easily plotted in Python. Uh, everything just works. And we've got a completely dedicated environment. And if you wanted to use multiple versions of Python, well, it's a bit overkill, but it is cool. So that's going to be all for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, would you ever consider using something as extreme as Cubes OS? Have you ever used Cubes OS? Some people, when I mentioned it on social media, said they actually had used it and really enjoyed it. I, I can see the appeal of it. So that's all from me for now. Bye!